Welcome to DevOps Chats, the industry-leading podcast for DevOps, digital transformation, cloud native, and cybersecurity. If it's happening, it's happening on DevOps Chats. Hey, everyone. I'm Alan Schimmel. And this is Mitch Ashley. And you're listening and watching now DevOps Chats. Yeah. (laughs) Mitchell, it feels like... uh, Wow. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a minute, as they say, the cool kids say. I feel like we're Jake and Elwood in the Bluesmobile. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe we should be wearing dark sunglasses. I don't know. But but seriously, I mean, for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, Mitchell Ashley and I, my friend Mitchell and I have been doing podcasting, no shit, since maybe 2004. Four, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so it's 20 years. 20 years of doing podcasting. Of course, we didn't have video podcasts then, did we, Mitchell? No, we didn't. And we just did it wherever we were on the road, you know, hop on Skype and record with Pamela. Or I think... Yes, do you remember that? Unless you were losing the the podcast equipment, which we won't get into. That that, that happens in San Francisco, I hear. Yeah, a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But anyway, look, and, you know, for a long time, it was originally still secure after all these years. Mm Mm-hmm podcast and then it was security boulevard and devops chats which this is so this is probably the fourth or fifth iteration of podcast series that mitch and i have done together over the years and you know you'll get a flavor for what we're going to do we try to have a good time we try to keep it casual but we try to keep it real and and interesting Mm -hmm. and and that's what we're going to be doing here today on uh this iteration of devops chat and uh, Mitch, we're going to try to do this what every week. Yeah, we oh. are. We are. And by the way, you know, this DevOps chat is proof that you can't keep a good podcast down. You know, <laughs> that's one way of looking at it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, and it is available as a video podcast, but we we know only about forty percent of podcasts are listened or watched as videos. So if you're listening to this as an audio file, that's cool too. We're going to try not to do anything that, you know, you're going to have less of an experience because you're listening to audio versus video. It's not like Mitchell and I are uh, two male models here, you know, and you're missing some eye candy. The face made for faces made for audio podcast. Exactly. To adapt. <laughs> so, so we'll go from there. But but that being said, you know, here on DevOps Chats, in addition, you know, to Mitchell and I bantering, we're going to try to cover what we think of the big, the big stories around DevOps. Of course, we'll be pulling from DevOps.com, mm-hmm. you know, our TechStrong uh, flagship site, uh, as well as TechStrong TV, which uh, we do three days a week, about three, three and a half hours a day of programming. So we'll be referencing... Uh, content from there and we'll keep in the show notes any uh, urls or links to yep. to these we we may even be able to throw up some qr codes if you are watching it on video for you to check the, that content out um so diving right into it mitch where do you want to start off it's it's january still 2024 new year where where would you like to start in this new year it is you know i you know, when when you called me and said, hey, I've got this domain called DevOps.com. Do you, what do you know about DevOps? And I said, well, not much yet, but let me go f- figure it out. You know, w- one of the first things that I implemented uh, where I was at the time was Hudson, and which turns into Jenkins, of course. And, of course, Jenkins still has, you know, what, 40 50% market share is still alive and well. And some interesting articles on DevOps.com about that. Uh, absolutely absolutely i think jenkins i think some people are are still mitchell a little surprised when they hear that jenkins still commands i the latest number i saw was from the uh, cd foundation did a survey i think last november Hmm. or october and it said according to their survey and believe it or not 43 percent of cicd is still done via jenkins which is astonishing astonishing but i but mitch before we jump into the two articles and i do look forward to jumping into them because they're good i think that whole kind of revelation that jenkins is still as big as it is goes to something deeper and bigger 
And that is how big DevOps is. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in 2023, and maybe even a little in 2022, you know, there were rumblings and grumblings in the market. Platform engineering is the new DevOps. DevOps is dead. Eh, that's marketing stuff. But a lot of people were saying, you know, we're not getting the DevOps we hope for. We're not getting the ROI. We're not getting the the magic that we wanted. And maybe it's not, you know, all this kumbaya and maybe the tools and, and everything else. But, you know, it, almost like, you know, maybe a little bit of the shine was coming off of DevOps. And I, I think, Mitch, being DevOps.com, we have a a responsibility, right? This is our cross to bear, so to speak. This is our thing to to champion. DevOps is alive and well by almost any metric you want to look at. Use of Jenkins being one of them. But go look, you know, Google searches around DevOps topics. They haven't fallen off at all. They've grown. Our, our viewers, our, our readers is increasing, you know, page. DevOps.com had one of the best years they've had in years. We've had, you know, in terms of readership and views and everything. You know, it used to be our Security Boulevard site was 150% bigger than DevOps.com. Hmm. And it's not anymore, right? DevOps has, has been catching up. So I, I don't buy into the DevOps is dead thing at all. I, I, I do think what we're seeing, though, is like every other technology and framework and you know you and i have been around the block you, you have that hype cycle mm -hmm. it went it was overly hyped it went into the trial of disillusionment now it comes out the other side into whatever was called the plateau of plateau of something i remember yeah yeah absolutely i've seen and, the same thing yeah and i i think that's that's what we are are experiencing and I, we're going to talk more about this on here and at DevOps.com. But, you know, I've, I've had a chance to talk to some DevOps leaders. I spoke to Jody Banzai, who's the CEO at Harness and was the founder CEO of AppDynamics, also the founder CEO of Traceable AI. I've spoken to KK, Kosa K, the founder of Jenkins. Yeah. Yep. Spoke up to Sasha Labore, the co-founder and chief strategy officer at CloudBees. Spoken to uh, David DeSanto from GitLab and, and Ashley Kramer from GitLab. Mm -hmm. uh, Shlomi, my friend Shlomi Ben Hayam from JFrog and Stephen Chin from JFrog. And they all, I mean, these are, these are public and big companies. And they all say the same thing. DevOps ain't going anywhere. No. As a matter of fact, they think we've entered a new era of DevOps. Right, where call what happened before Gen One, and I hate to use the term DevOps two O. That's an overused yeah. kind of paradigm. But you know, in in the in the first phase of DevOps, we, as Jody says, Jody Bonsai, we cob cobbled together tools to make sort of a coherent DevOps platform. Or, you know, an end to end DevOps story. But now we're in a new era where we have purpose-built. That's a word from Still Secure, right? Purpose-built appliances. Mm -hmm. We have purpose-built DevOps tools that are, were designed from the ground up to do that whole job from A to Z, not just CICD or testing or an IDE or, or, or Git or, or something like that, a repository. Um, and I think the other thing is where people used to kind of poo-poo the, the uh, cultural aspect of DevOps. I think it's, it's taken for granted now that, yes, cross-functional teams aren't a bad idea. They're not a bad thing. And we see, and that's really when you get down to the cultural aspects of DevOps, those cross-functional teams working together in harmony. Not to sound too kumbaya. Um, that's what DevOps is about. Tear was forming in my eye, but okay. yeah, I, I got you right there, huh, Mitch? Yeah, you had me at harmony. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, it was like three dog night. But anyway, um, I mean, what do you think, Mitchell? 
You, you know, it's I'm just kind of reaching back when I first started talking to people out about DevOps once I kind of felt like I had a handle on it. Um, I would always say, you know, yes, there's DevOps tools and there's technologies and a lot of things that kind of are, are kind of go in place to have a, a tool chain and a pipeline workflow, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you step back for a minute, it's kind of like agile. You could say agile is sprints. Well, yeah, that's just the mechanism. What it's, it's what it is about is deciding how you're going to build what you're going to build, doing uh, resource constrained, time resource constrained uh, development and, and pushing out releases more quickly. Well, DevOps has its flavor of that, right? It's yes, it's cross-functional teams, just like Agile was. It's about how do we create software in smaller increments, smaller bytes, whether you deploy them you know, fast or not, but being able to automate how often they get uh, checked in and built, you know, the CI, CD process, which is kind of the heart of DevOps, right? It's where most, if not all people start implementing DevOps. But su suffice it to say, DevOps is about how you create software, not the tools you use to create software. Yes, it's the tools too, but it's changing how you think about creating software. And some of it is is uh, culture. Yeah, it's it's not the silos and the stovepipes and the you know monolithic organizations as well as monolithic applications. But it's also the software architectures and and automating things so that you create flow through the process. So. What I was thinking about when you were talking, Alan, is it does remind me of Agile. Agile hasn't gone away. We still use Agile. We use a lot of Agile principles in, in DevOps where you technically, you know, do scrums and all that kind of thing. And DevOps hit that has hit that sort of mainstream place where, you know, pretty much everybody is doing it, at least in some form. And mm -hmm. I think its real strength is how it's adaptable. Right. Not every organization is going to behave like a greenfield. Let's start out, you know, we'll set this up like we want to do it the right way. You know, a lot of folks are living in mainframes or living with legacy applications or living in this bifurcated world of some of everything. And you have to adapt to, to what your environment is and also what your organization can can do. How much change and how do they work and can and they how work? fast? So I, 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 I think it's about adaptability is its real strength. Yeah. And and again, it goes back to the, the, look, there was never a manifesto. It was hard to pin down a definition of what it is exactly. And I think, as, you know, the, the upside of that is it, it gives it this adaptability that it could be anything you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you don't get, and that's interesting. DevOps religious wars, you know, like we used to back in the no, yeah, we <laughs> methodology. Don't do much of that. You, uh, God knows. Yes. <laughs> um, but but let so you know so that's the good news on DevOps today from uh, Pastor Mitchell and uh, Rabbi Allen over here, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the high priest of DevOps. But there we go. <laughs> you know the other thing is I we, you and I both Mitch have had a chance to stay in touch with a lot of the people who helped kind of found the DevOps movement, like our friend John Willis and Damon Edwards and, and Patrick Dubois, the guy that godfather DevOps himself. He was here in our offices just in August for this AI hackathon we did. And we spoke about some of this stuff. And yes, DevOps isn't new anymore. It's 10, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. But it's still relevant. And And to sit and start trying to fight about, is it real? And, and some of the religious stuff that when you know we we fought about early on, that's not relevant either, right? It's it's full speed ahead. Let's let's build software and deploy it as fast as we can and at the best quality that we can. Anyway, as you were saying, Mitchell, there are two interesting articles on Jenkins that appeared in DevOps.com recently. One was actually in December. And it was, um, I, I actually have it here and I'll bring it up. It's the future of Jenkins in 2024. And it was by Gilead David Mayan. And it, it's a great article. I, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and it laid out a really, I think, valid point of view of what you're doing with DevOps. Um, or excuse me, with what you're doing with Jenkins. Yeah, and look, for me, the real kind of 
crux of the issue with Jenkins is where does it fit in in a cloud native world where cloud native has become the kind of de facto compute standard does Jenkins have a place there much like years ago we asked does Puppet have a place there does Chef have a place there Ansible you know and I think the markets answered those questions but yet Jenkins holds on as we said 43% market share so maybe it does have a place there I remember we see, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think a couple things is it has longevity and momentum, right? You're not just going to rip and replace Jenkins tomorrow because you're on a whim, right? There's something looks a little shinier than what you've got. It, it really runs the roads. I mean, it runs the pipelines of CSU. So that's be a good reason to either supplement it or replace it. I, I think that one of the points of the article was um, things have moved to declarative, the GitOps. Um, YAML files, so things that we use to to configure, uh, you know, Helm files in in uh, in Kubernetes land, and and is is uh, Jenkins or the kind of the old approach, if we will, to CI/CD a, a too uh, stiff, too rigid? Can it be flexible enough? Can it be adapted mm-hmm. to cloud native? And d- if it's going to be adaptable to cloud native, do you have to be using cloud native technologies? Now you can dig into the Jenkins code and find out how much of that kind of thing that they've adopted in, and I know they've worked on that. Um, but it's a good question to ask. Is that the right way to do it, or do we need to continue to evolve, and what do we evolve to? Well, to me, it was sort of a Muhammad comes to the mountain or the mountain comes to Muhammad kind of thing. And in that, I think at some point, some of the folks in the Jenkins community said, no, Jenkins isn't right for cloud native. And, they, and we spun up Jenkins X, which was, in my mind, always Jenkins for Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, at, as we sit here today, what the support for Jenkins X is at this point. It's a um, relatively young project, right? It just got promoted. Yeah, but I don't know if it's getting the support of the Jenkins community. I mean, the Jenkins, look, the Jenkins community is the reason why Jenkins still has 40% of market share. Absolutely. It's a strong, independent community, well-managed, well-run for the most part. And, you know, Jenkins X was different, yet not. And, you know, I, I think at some point the smart thing was to somehow subsume it into Jenkins. But at some point, maybe we'll get some folks from the Jenkins community on here and talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, you know, after that article ran, I remember getting on in a discus, a discuss comment. Someone said, you know, they had, they thought differently mm. around this whole issue of Jenkins' future. And I said, hey, if you feel this strongly... You should write an article about it, mm-hmm. and and they did, and and that was the second article I wanted to uh, bring up, and it's Jenkins and Jenkins X in 2024, and it's by uh, Tiziano Catalano, who I I think is out in in Italy. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, he wrote a beautiful article here. It's a little long. But it's well worth the read. And again, we'll have the uh, URLs either on a QR code here for you if you're watching video or in the show notes if you're not with links. But again, I I would really urge you to read that. I would read both articles taken as an A and a B. And between the both of them, you're going to get as much Jenkins as you can stand. <laughs> it is um, a part one and a part two, because he refers to the first article. That- yeah, no, it, it definitely, right. It's a, I would think it's an op-ed to the first article. That's a good way to look at it, yeah. Right? And, um, or a rebuttal, and, and I, you know, you, but you need to read them both, I think, to really get a great handle on it. I want to, and by the way, both of these articles are not written by paid tech strong writers. These are passionate community members who submitted, you know, in a devops.com. We thank you for that. We, you know, we encourage people watching and listening to this show. If you feel strongly about something DevOps related, you too can submit. Uh, if, yep. Editor at devops.com will, will get you there for that. But those are, those are two really good articles, Mitch, that I wanted to, to bring up. And they're specifically to Jenkins. 
but they I think they go to the whole DevOps thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Good stuff. Thank you Next to up, people that wrote those. Yeah. Yeah, thank you to both of them. Next up, I wanted to go kind of from the old to the new. So talking about is Jenkins still relevant? And let's jump ahead to what's the deal with AI and DevOps, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is there, is there, I mean, DevOps, are we going to see a co-pilot for DevOps kind of thing, right? And um, an article, another article in DevOps.com that's gotten some attention is uh, using LLMs to automate pipeline conversions from legacy to Tecton. And it's by Siva, oh, I'm going to mess this one up, Siva Guranathan. And the idea here is, look, Tecton, which was a Google uh, project, right? I, it's not CNCF, I'm pretty sure, though. Yeah. Um, it's very popular. It's a popular popular tool here um how can we use llms and that generative ai to make it better and, and and i you know the gist of the article if you haven't read it is first he does a really good job of laying out why you want to may migrate to tecton if you're on jenkins or spinnaker or or some harness or some other cicd tool and that's, I guess, a personal choice, the pros and cons. And then if you are going to do that, though, here's how you can use LLMs and AI to kind of supercharge it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, as I mentioned, it got a lot of hits up on the site. But I think it's, it's a reminder, again, we're in this next evolutionary phase of DevOps, and DevOps is staying current with what's going on out there, but it's adaptable. And and I think this is kind of living proof of it, Mitch. It is, and you know, it goes right to what you were talking about before of, okay, it is Kubernetes based, it's doing Kubernetes automation, it's declarative, you know, that's, you know, and it's also kind of working in a stateless type of environment. So a lot of the modern principles of software design that we apply to our applications today, it's it's rebuilt the idea of CI CD pipelines and the tools and the platform technology that that run that. And it was interesting, you know, you think of LLMs and AI, what's the next great thing it's going to give us, you know, I think of deep thought back to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, <laughs> what's that? What's the question, right? 42 is mm -hmm. the answer. Um, you know, where do you, wh what's the great, wonderful thing that AI is going to perform? Well, this article talks about using LLMs to help you kind of merge and converge your pipelines that are that you've already created in Jenkins and you've already created in um, uh, Azure DevOps and, and uh, GitLab, I believe, and, and basically transition that. So now you can do, take that information and transform it into what you could use inside Tecton instead of you rewriting all that. So it's kind of a transitionary. You don't have to throw that away. You can use that to help create the next environment and maybe run both, I guess. So it's it's an it's a transitionary type use of AI. It isn't a rip and replace, you know, this is going to change everything. We don't need developers anymore, or whatever kind of, you know, crazy things get said. Absolutely. Cool stuff. And again, we'll, we'll have the URL and QR code up for that one here. Um, hey, Mitch, the next thing I wanted to bring up was back to this, you know, DevOps evolution and DevOps healthy. And it's a, it's actually something that comes off our TechStrong TV channel. Mm. And you can grab this video on TechStrong.tv as well as like 6,000 other videos we've recorded over the years. Mm. Um and it's with our friend Gene Kim, who, you know, to many, he was the introduction of DevOps to many, right? The Phoenix Project, he was including cool. myself. Yeah. And um, for those who don't know, right, Gene has renamed his DevOps Enterprise Summit to, and I, I hope I don't mess this up, uh, IT Executive Leadership Summit or something to that effect. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people said, ha, I told you DevOps is dead. Leaving Gene Kim changed the name of it. You know, and um, I, I had a chance to talk to, well, I was talking to Gene about his great new book out with Dr. Steven Spear about wiring, uh, excuse me, 
Wiring the Winning Organization, which is a great book, highly recommended. But I asked Gene why he did it. And, you know, Gene's enthusiasm and support of DevOps is not faltered one iota. Mm -hmm. I think what the name change, which was, you know, supported by a lot of folks in the DevOps world, was that Gene's, uh, both the books that IT Rev publishes and the subsequent conference, which, you know, has a lot to do around the books, was was much was growing you know with topics that weren't really DevOps related. They were related to leading winning teams, which is and high performing IT teams, which is kind of right out of the door of stuff that Gene and, and Jez Humble and Nicole Forsgren started. And so he wanted to reflect that and not like you know bring people in under the guise of DevOps and then discuss all these things that weren't DevOps. And, and, uh, but he is, you know, still 100% behind DevOps. And if you listen to the interview there, uh, you, you can hear it for yourself. I'm not putting words in his mouth. So, look, for those who were pointing to that as evidence of something, again, you know, yes. fake news. <laughs> fake news. You know, hmm. I, I have not read the book yet. I'm, I'm excited to, to take a look at it. When I think back to the Phoenix project, right, the whole part of the story is taking these things from manufacturing, right? That that he right from the goals. Yeah, exactly. And if you think about the evolution of DevOps, that's happened from DevOps out now. Of course, you know we're like, how do we do security? How do we do governance? Everybody's taking some of the ideas of DevOps and trying to apply it within their job function, their organization, right? It's really permeated. A lot of how companies work, almost like Agile has, right? Same kind of an idea. It, it seems like Gene's changing the name is to kind of recognize that that we we have to talk about it in the context of the enterprise when we talk about solving these really tough problems. And there's a lot of DevOps things that can, you know, we won't call it DevOps when we talk about wiring the organization, but I would imagine some of those are pretty similar, if not the same that we've been using in DevOps. Is that, am I close or am I off base on that? Yeah, I, no, I, I think, I, I think you're on, on point, you know, but hey, we could do a quick poll. No, we can't. <laughs> um, anyway. a, we'll do a webinar and do a quick poll. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe we could do a pulse meter out of this one. But, um, but you know, certainly, Mitch, it, it's it's a good interview. I, I highly do highly. I, it's a long one. It was one of the you know. I usually aim for those to be fifteen minutes. I think it came out twice that. But anyway, do check it out. It, it's a good interview, and you can get Gene's take on on that issue. Mitch, that's all I had on the uh, docket to go over for today. But I wanted to take just maybe another three to five minutes and and give people an idea of what to expect going forward on DevOps chats, because we're going to be doing these weekly. Um, we'll try to keep them, you know, around this time in terms of length. But I wanted very much for this first show to be you and I, mm -hmm. just you and I, you know, establishing sort of a rhythm. We may even do that for show two. But as we move on to episode three and four and five and so on, we are going to bring in guests. If you'd like to be a guest on DevOps Chats, you could write to me at Alan at DevOps, A-L-A-N at DevOps.com, and we'll try to fit you in there. Um, we'll be featuring more videos we've done as well as articles and, you know, tech-strong gang members, right? And I mean that in a good way, not not like Crips and Bloods, but, you know, friends of tech-strong. So um, it'll be every week, and we we encourage you to subscribe to it on whether you're listening to this on on apple or spotify or stitcher or some other amazon or some other platform please subscribe and follow so you'll stay up to date on the latest ones we're going to do our best to bring you the very best of devops we will uh content and we'd love to hear from you you know if you have a question or you have an idea for a topic or you know hey i think that thing mick said is full of hooey here's my opinion about it you know we want to hear from you or you know that was really great thanks for covering that actually we have an email set up for that mitchell it's devops chats at devops.com but it's chats with an s devops chats at devops.com 
And uh, any comments, suggestions, or you want to speak or whatever, you could send to there as well. That'd be perfect. Well, Mitchell, it's good to be back in the saddle again, man. I can't believe we just sat here and rifled off like a 35-minute podcast, kind of just chit-chatting, but we did. It's like riding a bike. It's just an e-bike now. <laughs> yeah, I have an e-bike. <laughs> I know you do. All right. <laughs> well, that's going to that's gonna call a wrap on this episode of DevOps Chat. Thanks for listening or watching or however you're doing this. I'm Alan Schimmel. And this is Mitch Ashley. And you just listened to DevOps Chats. There we go. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye-bye.